Well, in case you've been wondering, what is it like to have a mobile gaming corpse mini dual stack controller? Uh, <clears throat> with a switch plate option of white or black switch plates. Well, so this guy is uh, kind of a budget buy, a $38 controller at Target. I bought it solely because um, it says wireless controller for Switch and Windows PC. Um, now, that's a lie because um, it's a wireless controller for Switch, it's a wired controller for PC. And I would normally gripe about that, but for the application I'm using it for, wired is fine. Just that it is not, even the manual says, not wireless for PC gaming. It says right here. <clears throat> uh, there's your stuff layout. And bottom left, set up PC, wired only. So, yeah. Um, I guess it's just a matter of grammar, um, but if you were going to buy it, the reason I did, to have wireless on both regards, you would be disappointed. Uh, I'll be returning it for uh, that and several other reasons. So what I wanted was one that worked for both Switch and PC wirelessly, but I also wanted something with customizability. So what is cool is there's a button here that acts as a programming button, and there's also a button here that acts as a programming button. So this guy sets the turbo mode on things. This guy lets you do mapping and a couple other things that affect that button on the back can do rumble and uh, joystick calibration of different sensitivity ranges. So uh, bang for the buck, you're already doing really good, especially because the HD rumble or near HD type feeling of rumble compared to other, say $20 controllers or $15 controllers, this thing feels much more like a $50 controller. Um, it feels sharp, it feels precise, it, it rumbles in very subtle ways at times that resemble more than Nintendo Switch's original controllers than um, anything aftermarket that I've tried, so big hats off to that. Um, the faceplate change is, I guess, important to some people, so I may as well pop this off. There's a black one in the box, it looks like it's black, so we'll save some time not showing you the color, but the mechanism is pretty simple and intelligent, a couple of magnets, really easy to remove. Uh, wouldn't fall off though, um, sits nicely, but uh, I would say that there's some kind of tolerance issue because there's a lot of plastic wear here already around that space. Now, um, if you have to worry about hygiene, we know that some of these um, Joy-Cons can have issues when they get contaminated that affect calibration and center. Oh gosh, somewhat easy to remove. Um, gee, what did I just do? <laughs> I bumped something on the menu. Yeah, cool, a lot of the game I was in a load. Um, but you could do some cleaning around here, which is nice. Yeah. All right, so let's get into actual features for a moment. Um, this is where I got disappointed again. So, um, goodness, uh, eating my words about easy on off. It's it's a little flimsy. I have no little go. Okay, anyway, well, I can't do that a lot, so no complaints. So I have programmed using mapping, which I love mapping. I have a small controller that I used to buy on Amazon, Thrustmasters. I don't make them anymore, but they're cool because you can map them, which beats going into a menu. But I'm, I've mapped the jump button. Now what's neat is I didn't lose or exchange anything mapping that front and back button. Now I'm sure that, let's see, let's try it. Um, this is the dream nail, and this is magic, which I, yeah. All right, so let's map those for a second. Push and hold the button on the back. When that flashes, you can exchange two buttons. Hmm. No, no, I cannot. It wants me to map it to the left. Okay, so it only maps these buttons to the back, um, which is, uh, I, that's for me, that's a complaint. I mean, I, I guess I understand the idea that, hey, you know, you can change these somewhere in most, games and that what they're letting you map is what these buttons on the back do there are only two so it seems to me like a whole lot of fuss for two buttons now i have another controller where these are like a, a jog that rockers back and forth and um so there's actually four buttons on the back they're really hard to reach these are really easy to reach so that's kind of cool uh but so the map features gets peculiar here so here i am with a, a couple of hacks installed and i'm, I'm jumping um and if I put on turbo for the jump button, using the turbo button, I'm now flying, right? So now this, this button in the software 
is made to mimic the button on the back here. And if you notice, if I hold this button on the back, it is not turbo yet until I tell it, hey, be a turbo button. Wait a minute. Oh, come on, are you kidding? So this is like the third fault I found in this thing now. I was gonna say one thing, now I'm gonna say two. Um, so ironically, I cannot turbo the back button at all. Uh, let's see, so that's magic. Yeah, so neither of the back buttons can be programmed to be turbos, which is peculiar. Um, so my, my gripe was, um, going to just be that, uh, that I can't turbo the back button, um, but, you know, I mean, it, it, it kind of works out for what I need to do, which was that, um, with this menu mod, uh, when you go into the menu, if you hit turbo B right now in the menu, uh, watch what happens, it's really cool. Um, ooh, it's not doing it. See there, yeah, multiple gar garbage gibberish menu options. So there's a couple of hacks in progress here that have caused that bad behavior. Um, and now I've got a tattoo on the screen until I hit a bench or exit, uh, which isn't even meant to be there. So if I, if I don't use turbo, that wouldn't have happened. So I'll be using the back button for non-flying non jumps and that. Um, so, yeah, I... Uh, Here's my thing, you build a controller and you add customizability and then there's no consistency. And that has been driving me nuts. I have even contacted major brands saying, hey look, why don't you let me just plug this thing into a USB and download something to like non-volatile RAM that gives me absolute and total customization of, you know, these are DirectX, keyboard, mouse, left, right, click. Um, it's overdue, I mean, it, I, I really hate to do it, but I'm probably gonna go back to Arduino and build my own controller that can do exactly that. Um, the problem is the buttons cost really add up the feel of things, um, you know, just, I, I hey, you know, I, I did that, I'm not just talking, I, I did that already, here you go. Um, I got so sick of not having something for Raspberry Pi where you have no Bluetooth connectivity that I actually modified a stack to impersonate Logitech and I have programmable button maps, and I actually have a GitHub that mentions some of how this was done. Unfortunately, all the parts I used are like quadruple in price and um, completely unavailable now, uh, one or the other. Or um, So that was, I made two and that'll never happen again. But, uh, you know, making something this size, there's not a lot of great artworks and PCBs out there. So uh, for my review of this, uh, mobile gaming corpse switch plate dual switch plate controller um i'd say seven out of ten for value um five out of ten for features which is you know saying a lot more than most unfeatured controllers that are really one or zero out of ten because they don't do anything so not the end of the world um one other thing i would mention kind of interesting you could probably almost hear this that's the up and down button clicking away. And um, it's very tactile, almost like a cherry key kind of feel. And that's kind of interesting. Um, I, I can't say I like it. Uh, if I were to game on it all the time in this cursor, I think it would drive me nuts. I also don't know how that would wear and tear. Uh, but for like what I'm doing with in the game's currently where I want to be sure I've done exactly an up or a down for certain types of like sword releases and things, uh, certain spell types. That's actually pretty cool to be like really sure that I definitely reach what I would reach for. Um, and even though I have really pretty large hands, um, this like the Thrustmaster controller that I had the mapping on feels good in my hand, hasn't made me feel tired at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're thinking about getting one, keep your receipt and uh, you probably won't hate it uh, unless you're one of those guys that hates like wired you know, wireless lag on a switch. Um, to that end, like I, I, I uh, think here's what you shouldn't do. Okay, don't don't do this last. So, <laughs> uh, so what I was messing with before I got this was was just a little kind of a holdover. So still on the hunt. Uh, I really like to not have to put this. Don't use the turbo B button thing because I was gonna assign the back of this guy to turbo and the front to not. 
Um, but actually, as a side note, um, kind of annoying, you know, Nintendo likes to do weird things the way that Japanese uh, input is. It's always opposite of like the American expectations. So um, on this, you know, this is okay. And on a Switch, this is okay. And so it's been really a, kind of a dyslexic experience using uh, this game on PC after playing it on Switch. These control buttons feel opposite and backwards because they switched on me. And um, I, I guess actually that almost solves another issue that I'm using this for okay because I won't get confused when I'm on the PC. So it's all working out, but I'm still returning it based on the fact that the turbo doesn't reach the back and that I can't map the front because I would like to be able to map these things between themselves like going into software. Uh, worth noting that when you disconnect this cable, uh, the, the memory is volatile. So any programmation that you've done to it is gone. And that programmability uh, is kind of lost in a good way on purpose, because if say you've done something stupid, um, it's a lot easier just to reset it very quickly by disconnecting the power than um, having to uh, figure out what you did or didn't map or turbo. So that's kind of, I guess, convenient. There's a reset button on the back of this, like I have on some of my Arduino devices. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, I'm guessing that's for the wireless pairing uh, because I don't think it has any value or feature in wired mode on PC. Uh, and again, on PC, you can only be wired and on Switch. Um, I believe you have the choice of both. So if you're looking for like one of those, uh, you know, gamer experiences where you want the least amount of delay possible, this guy could suit the bill. Uh, as a last, last, last comment here, um, the way that this USB plugs in, um, probably kind of a semi-standard thing now, uh, it's a bit of a recess in there. And so if you're using a magnetic charger, like I was planning on, another reason probably ditching this thing, uh, those magnetic chargers are pretty handy for stuff where you just really don't want to have to fuss with it. Um, it's not going to work. You'd have to mill that space out with like a Dremel. That'd be a messy, gross thing. Uh, it'd be kind of weird. And then I don't know how much that would affect this fitting securely. But of course, you know, it's good from um, everybody else's perspective. But my weird little magnetic thing is that this will be very secure with it being short inside, yay, far-ish. So that's that's actually probably more like that far, yeah. So, I mean, that's that's a good detent of space, a good recess, so. Um, yeah, kudos kudos for the design. Um, you know, good good 85 out of, out of 100 on that. But uh, for 20 bucks, I'd probably keep it. For 40, I know I can do better. And, um, you know, uh, I'm still not for the absolute perfect controller. It doesn't exist, but um, this guy, you know, solid B plus uh, for the value and whatnot, so. All right. There it is. Cheers.